I'm Lou Brutus. Great to be joined by Ali Sykes of Bring Me the Horizon. Ali, how are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm doing all right. Now, you are still in L.A. at this point. I would be curious to hear what you're going to be doing for the holiday season this year. Um, I'm going to Brazil, which is my second home now. Um, so I'm going to be having a nice sunny Christmas. What's the uh, What's the holiday season like down there? It's really nice. I mean, it's like this. It's summer in December, so it's really hot. Um, you have Christmas dinner on midnight Christmas Day, so you stay up all Christmas Eve and actually have Christmas dinner when the clock strikes midnight, which is really nice. And then you eat all the leftovers the next day, so that's like a, a real fun. Um, it's, 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 it's different, but it's a lot. It's a lot of fun waiting up all night to eat and just eat like crazy. And in that respect, it's a lot like America and England. Just eat lots of food and um, chill out and share presents and stuff. But it's just all in sun rather than it being fucking freezing cold. Yeah, I always wanted to do a holiday season, you know, part of it in London, part up in Edinburgh, maybe over to Wales, you know, mm. may maybe next year if things get a bit better. So, yeah, maybe. So uh, tell me about L.A. these days. First of all, I would love to hear about how NotFest went for you over on the West Coast. Yeah, NotFest was sick. I mean, I was just mad. It was. I mean, it was like, apart from the shows we played in England, we did an arena tour just before. Uh, we haven't played any shows in two years, so to come out to L.A. and be lucky enough to be one of the bands that gets to play some shows this year, especially overseas, was would be cool anyway. But the fact that we're playing with like one of the bands that inspired us to start a band in the first place and have influenced us so heavily and be main support to that band is just, uh, it was a really special night. And it seems like you guys have a really good rapport with the Not Guys. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of respect and love either side. So um, I was quite actually like surprised <laughs> like how much uh, Corey and that was into our band and stuff because we're not really... You know, we played festivals and stuff before, but we never really sat down and had a good talk. And so I was really shocked to find out that he's like, a, you know, an avid fan and, you know, follows what we do at all. It was, it was really cool. So, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, really nice. With both NotFest and uh, some of the other gigs that you uh, did manage to do in 2021, what did the audience look like when you looked out at them? Because I would imagine there's lots of masks there's probably a lot of fogged up glasses. Uh, wh wh what does a crowd physically look like? Is there that much of a difference with uh, the COVID protocols? I mean, uh, we all have this joke, like COVID doesn't exist in venues because no one wears masks. Everyone okay. is partying and moshing and dancing like there is no virus. Um, so to be honest, it doesn't look much different apart from, you know what, it's like, it feels crazier. I think there's just so much pent up energy from the two years of everyone being in isolation that the, the shows just go crazy hard. Like kids go harder. The sing-alongs are louder. It's just, I don't know, maybe I'm appreciating it more because it's been taken away from us for so long to come back and just really soak it up. But it just feels like you can feel like a more frenzied energy within the crowd because kids have been waiting for this for years, you know? And it's finally happening. So, yeah. And you guys are certainly seasoned performers. You know, there, there's no question about that. But even with that, did you get any extra butterflies before hitting the stage again? Or were you like, fuck, do I remember how to do this? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you forget how to be a rock star after, like, two months off anyway. Like, you you, you go home and you just spend two months, like, doing, re you know, regular stuff. Like, just at home, going shopping, all that stuff. You completely forget how to like act like you're in a rock band like you get back on stage and like what do i do to this like music again and stuff and it takes so like two years off it was like completely alien and man i was like i was getting nervous for sound checks just like rehearsing us playing on stage without anyone in the audience i was like oh my god i'm nervous and there's not even anyone watching yet so yeah it was uh it was like doing it all over again like you it felt like you'd never been in the band and you had to really relearn everything. For me, it did come back quite quickly after a while. But at first it was just like, wow, this feels strange. 
when you run into fans out in public, like when you are off the road, you're not in tour mode or you're not in band mode, how does it normally go for you? And do are people generally okay to, to meet up with? Yeah. I mean, I'm the only thing about me is I'm trying to get better. at is like, I'm when people catch me by surprise, I'm like, I go so red. I'm just like nervous. And like, and I see people looking around, like, who's this guy? Like, like, cause obviously like, this kid who or whoever's come to ask me for a photo knows who I am and is obsessed with us or whatever. Everyone else in the, the place is like, who the fuck's this guy? And I'm always just, <laughs> just so embarrassed, you know what I mean? But like, I mean, I, it's a really nice thing and special. So obviously like I try my hardest to make it, I think as well, because I'm in the band, people expect me to be super confident, super chill and have something to say. Whereas like sometimes people come up to me and go, are you Ollie Sykes from Boom the Rise? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, they didn't think past that question. So they're like, cool. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. And then it's like, it's like 30 seconds of like silence. And I'm like, and then, you know, maybe they ask for a photo or whatever. But yeah, I'm trying to get better at that. But, you know, I always just remind myself that one day no one's going to give a fuck who I am. So like to really appreciate those moments where people are coming up and asking for photos and, you know, or just coming to say, like, I, I love it when someone comes up to me and just says, hey, I really love your band or your music means a lot to me. And then just walk off. I'm just like, that's so cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. One of the things I've always found funny and, and is somewhat consistent through the many, many artists I've, I've spoken to all these years is there are some folks who are really, really good in front of 30 or 40,000 people but get them in front of three or four people and they're really uncomfortable about speaking or, or that's doing me. anything. That's me. Like I've always said, like, you know, like I, I own a clothing company and stuff and I'm like, I, I can't get up and, you know, I could never form it. Like I have a team meeting in front of my like staff, which is like 20 people. I couldn't get up and talk to them. I can get up in front of 20,000, but I can't get in front of 20. It's weird. I don't know what that is. Plus you're paying them. I mean, you're the boss. You should be okay with that. Right. It should be, yeah, but no, I'd be just like, I'd just be stuttering. I'd just be like, no, not for me. I refuse to, I, I refuse to give a speech at my wedding. So like, I can't, I can't do it in front of like, when it's like like personal, like intimate, and this, and I don't know. I, with the music, you feel like I'm, I'm hiding behind it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, and I, and I can put on a bit of a character, and and like, it's almost like when I go, it's like not me on stage, but yeah doing like a little team meeting or something that small. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. It's an exaggerated facet of your personality that you exactly. present as the facade. That's, that's how I normally look at those things. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have to ask, um, how did the whiskey a go-go gig go? Had you ever been in there before or had you ever gigged there before? Um, no, we haven't. That was the first time. Um, it was sick. Just getting to play in such a legendary place. And also just like, as much as we miss like the shows that we used to i think like even more like we're we were so nostalgic for that like for a little gig do you know what i mean just just crazy sweaty little gig so we're just so sick to go and be able to do that you know i've i've been lucky enough to see several gigs there i think the last band i saw at the whiskey was actually kiss uh who had only played there the uh the one time when you walk into a venue like that, where there is a, a, a real history and it, it could be a small place, it could be a, a stadium or an arena, some places seem to me to have a vibe. Do you ever pick up on that? Is there a palpable sense from the whiskey or any, place, any other place that you played of, you can tell you're in someplace special? I mean, you could tell <laughs> from the smells, to be honest, there's a lot of <laughs> smells going on at whiskey. Every room's got its own aroma, so you can just tell that a lot of shit has gone down in that venue. Yeah, not all of it good, by the way, hence no. and some of the smells. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Die For You and uh, whatever else uh, you have for new music in the pipeline. How did you get things done? Um, we're working on like new music now for the record that Die For You will be on. Um, yeah, we're just, we're, we've been out here for a month, just working on ideas, working with people, and it's slowly coming together. Um, we're, we're getting there, but we're experimenting a lot and um, still finding our feet with like exactly the direction. And well, we know the direction, but it's like, it's uh, executing it is a little more difficult because of what we're trying to do. 
Um, but yeah, it's uh, we've got some cool stuff for sure. Obviously, you don't want to give away everything that's going on, but can you give me a sense of, are, are you in a rehearsal studio someplace or you're writing X amount of hours per day? I mean, what what's it like when you're in this mode where you're trying to create music? What, what What's like a day-to-day uh, schedule like? We're writing Monday to Friday. We um, we were writing, we rented an Airbnb while we're out here and we spent um, the first two weeks just working from the house. And now we're in a studio putting stuff down and still working on ideas. So we're working pretty nonstop um, right now, just, just getting ideas because we're obviously we're all going to go away. And this is the first time the band have been in the same room for like two years working on music. So um, yeah, it's uh, we're, we're going pretty hardcore and just getting, you know, lots of ideas right now. Is it better when you're living or, or living at least a large portion of the day communally when you're all together and constantly back and forth with ideas? It's just, it's just nice to be, to, to, for it to feel like, like I, it was really cool over the pandemic that we managed to figure out a way to make music and record it and stuff. Everyone in isolation and doing it remotely, but it does get old after a while when you just want to like, you just want to be around people, you know, you just kind of st- strive for that human connection and stuff. So that's just, that that's just nice right now. Um, and it's kind of like the, the breath of fresh air we needed because it would just get in, it would get in old having to like do everything over zoom and just sit at a computer all day. And, you know, it, it's still great. And we're going to do that a lot, especially as we're all going to be separating next week and going back to our own ho- homes. Um, but it's just been nice to just for it to feel like old times again, you know, do you still enjoy making records? Cause some people burn out on it and, and some don't, how, how are you with it? It's a love hate um, relationship. It's just um, like, making music's just horrible but then when you get it and when it's it's beautiful and it's amazing it's like it's a head fuck and but we will never and it gets harder as you get older or at least it feels that way and you have to push yourself harder and make sure like you're not putting out out shit or you're not just giving up because like that's always been my biggest fear it's like so many of my favorite bands as i got older just she's like start putting stuff out and you're like is this what happens when you get older do you lose touch and you're just incapable of making good music so it's like we just we'd like that's why we've only had one song out over last year is because it took us that long to like to get it perfect and we'll just keep writing and writing until it's until we're like completely happy with it and you know someone asked me while we're here and we had five weeks here they were like so how many songs do you think to get out of like out of this and i'll like i'll be happy with one great song and they're like one song that's it and i'm like yeah but that if one good song's worth fucking 20 shit ones you know what i mean or 20 whatever ones it's like it's not what we're about we we want everything we put out to be fucking special like really special and different and fresh there's so many things we want our music to be that's why it takes a long time for it to to come together because we don't want to put out the same shit you've heard from us before but we also want it to be fucking good. And, you know, there's so, so many variables of, why, of our music that it takes a while for us to, to craft it. Is there anything more you can say about Die for you and sort of put it into perspective as why this seemed to be the song to come out at this time? Um, it was just after months of experimentation, we got the sound that we were looking for. It's kind of like nostalgic, emo, hardcore feeling that reminded us of like the bands at least i got i i grew up listening to but then also mixing it with a contemporary more modern sound and making it feel like it wasn't a song from 15 years ago you know that's the whole ethos of these records that we're doing it's like the nostalgic they take you back to a a a time that you remember but at the same time it feels like a step forward you know um and that just takes some a lot of experimentation to get that right it's easy to write songs that feel like 15 years old but you know I don't, I don't think that anyone wants to hear that I think we all want to we all want to hear something that feels fresh so that was it just sets the tone for the record really nicely on on, on you know
you know, what to expect sonically. And uh, is there an, any examples you can bring up of bands? You don't even have to particularly be a huge fan of theirs, but are there any bands that you think has have consistently been able to put out excellent new music even after they they reach a point where a lot of people just kind of burn out on create creativity um arctic monkeys i think are, are an amazing band that are always pushing themselves and pushing the boundaries and always one step ahead of like what you expect of them um, and you never know what they're going to put out next um and I think like they're like I look up to them in in terms of like songwriting as like always, you know, not doing the easy thing, not doing the thing that would get them even bigger or whatever, but doing the thing that that satisfies them musically and creatively. Um, they're a massive inspiration to us. By the way, I was looking uh, ahead to next year and some of the stuff you guys had coming up. Uh, tell me about the Malta Festival. Yeah, that should be fun. Um, it's our first kind of like version of this, you know what I mean? Obviously, we're inspired by bands like Slipknot who did Not Fest and Paramore that do their kind of version of this and stuff. And we just wanted to make a festival where it was like for the hardcore fans, for like if you're a Bring Me Horizon fan, this is like the ultimate event, you know what I mean? I, we just thought that would be so fun. And, um, you know, that's what we're always that's what we'll always look to do when we're like looking at our festival runs and our touring ahead it's like what can we do that's a little bit different rather than just signing up to the same festivals and doing the same run every year you know it's like trying to figure out like a something a little different and and hopefully that's what this will be and this is going to be on the island of malta in the mediterranean correct yeah 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 well you know what when you get there Check it out because there's tons of really interesting shit there, I would think. And I know it's very beautiful. So, yeah, it's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> 